Welcome to Learning Happy Hour. I'm Mitch. I'm Jason. We're here in Seattle at Highline College participating in the Pacific Rim Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition. That is a mouthful of a name, isn't it? <laughs> it is. This weekend, Mitch and I have been members of the white team. We have been providing technical support to the college students who are the competitors, and they are defending their networks against the red team using the Palo Alto Networks firewall. In this episode, we do an interview interview with Kurt Giesel, and he's one of the architects for the competition here. And something that's unique about what they've done is they've put all of the infrastructure, all of the competition in AWS. So it's a very cloud-centric competition, which I think was really cool and novel as a way to go about it. We want to say thank you to Highland College for including us, for using our firewall, and for um, educating a great group of students who are going to be the future cybersecurity warriors. We hope you enjoy this interview, and thanks for watching. Welcome to a bonus episode of Learning Happy Hour with Mitch and Jason. Remember to BYOB, bring your own brain. Cheers! So we are here at the PRC DCC, which stands for... PRCC DC. That's what I said. Pacific Rim Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition. And we're here with Kurt... Giesel. Giesel. And he is the one of the key brains behind this entire operation. So you are on the... Black the team. black team and white team, so we kind of call ourselves the gray team. And uh, there's a bunch of other people in the room, and they're all part of this uh, operation. So Kurt's going to show us a little bit about what is involved with uh, running the PRC DC. Yeah, well, uh, this is the first year we ran it in AWS. We've always run it on vSphere before this. Uh, it's our third year for having a Palo Alto in the competition, but our first year doing Palo Alto in AWS. Uh, I believe we're the first ones doing it. Yeah, yeah. Doing Palo Alto and AWS for a red team, blue team competition. So how long have you guys been doing the, these competitions all year? Uh, this is the 12th year of PRCCDC and 10th year that we've hosted here at Highline. So I've been involved for 10 years. Oh my gosh, yeah. 10 years. Uh, so how different is this, this time versus the very first year? Very first year, it was completely physical. Uh, every student had physical desktops, physical servers, physical switches. We ran miles of cables in this building to to build a private network because uh -huh. we didn't trust it on our network at first um, because it is a yeah, you know, it's a competition. competition. Right, right. We have live hackers here and we wanted to keep them off of our network. Yeah, so the the live hackers are the pen testers, they're the, the red, red team, team yep. and they're attacking college students who are the blue, teams. blue team, right? And so their job so so explain a little bit about what the what the blue team is supposed to do. How do they win the competition? So the blue team is uh, eight students from a college and they need to defend a network of a fake business. This year it happens to be Azcatraz Prison. Uh, a prison for <laughs> wizards and witches in the Harry Potter universe. Nice. Um, they need to defend their servers, which they have, you know, a web server, domain controller, database servers, email servers, anything that you would have in a, in a typical business environment. Um, but they need to also respond to business tasks in the form of injects, which is something their boss would ask them to do. For example, we need you to add... Uh, some records of this database. We need you to edit the web server, uh, write some reports on what's been going on, give us some logs, and explain what you've been seeing. Draw a diagram. Draw of the a network. diagram of the yeah. network. Okay. So they need to do this uh, throughout the competition, but they also have to defend against the uh, pen testers, the red team, who are trying to bring them down. So they can't just concentrate on keeping their services up. They also have to run the business. Um, but they can't run the business and ignore what's going on on their system either. So right. it's a balancing act. Mm -hmm. uh, they're scored on uptime. With, there's a scoring engine that records their uptime status. I already have it open. Oh yeah. So every oh, minute yeah. it'll show each team their services and whether it's up or down. Okay. So what kind? Of, what they have a uh, email server. So yeah, database? they have a, the, in this competition they happen to have DNS server, MySQL database, couple file shares, web server, checking SSH on two boxes, and email server. So red is bad. Red green is, is good. bad. Green is good. Yeah. And it's all it is is doing a check uh, against the service and records you know one or zero up or down, records in the database, uh, does a check every minute. They get points. Uh, there's also an SLA violation or an SLA. So 
we have it set to eight consecutive failures, they start losing twice as many points as they would gain on up. Oh, okay. So, so if they're up for an hour and down for a half an hour, they're back to zero points. Oh, wow. Okay. So they penalize the downtime. Yes. So uptime good, downtime up good, very, very bad. bad. Yeah. Okay. Great. 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 So um, the injects come in. And how do, how do they get the injects? How does that work? So uh, throughout the years, we've done lots of ways. We've sent them an email, but if they don't keep their email server up, they can't get injects. So that kind of seemed like a double negative, you know. They're, right, right, right. They can't get any more points. We've hand-delivered them, you know, years ago in the past. But uh-huh. uh, this year, we designed a uh, web portal. So the students will log into a web page, and their injects show up when they're released. On the admin site, we happen to see every inject, but they would see them just as they're showing up. Tells them when the inject is released, when it's due. They can click on it and see what the inject is, what the task is. This one happens to be the first one they had to do. Uh-huh. Configure their proxy server. Configure everything to use their proxy server, right? So they can get out to the internet. Figure that's a good first step. <laughs> now, there's a deadline for each one of these. They there's a deadline. So time due. This one came out at zero. We base everything on game time. And we do this in case we have any problems and we're late starting. We don't have to rewrite everything. Right, right, right. So game time, the clock starts running at zero. We're in day two, so we're 15 hours into the competition now. But yes, inject is due at the due time. They can click a button in their portal to submit their injects to upload. Uh, if it's late, it marks it as late. They can still turn it in. It's just half points yeah, for yeah, being yeah. late. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and hey. we, we make it quite impossible for them to do every inject on time in order they need to learn to prioritize oh okay so it's like in like in real life yeah real life so it's a simulator essentially we try yeah business simulator with cyber defense skills are at the forefront managing compressed into 18 hours compressed in 18 hours yeah right more work than they'll probably do in a month <laughs> typically maybe not but. right that's great so i can hear the phone going and that's help desk right so yes. you've got You've, you're simulating a help desk. It's it's a help desk that's sort of out of the game. We have, like, the game world. They're the IT department of this fake business. Oh, okay. And we actually have another team called the Orange Team who act as the customers. In this case, customers of IT would be company employees. Mm-hmm. So they'll call and say, I can't check my email, I can't get to my files, and so on. And IT has to provide good customer service in right. the middle of all this chaos. Right. This uh, help desk is for infrastructure problems. If they think they're having an infrastructure problem, they can call us. Nine times out of ten, they'll say, I don't have access to my web server. It seems to be down. And It's the red team. It's the red team. So we're like, yeah, that's a problem. Can't help you. Sorry. <laughs> that's your responsibility. The red team... Uh, they are professional pen testers. They understand the uh, the nature of the competition, that it's not an exercise for them. It's an exercise for the students, the learning environment. So they don't, some go rogue, but for the most part, they don't just take them down. Right, right. They, they toy with them. They get in there. They, you know, they do the reconnaissance. They get in there. They try to create back doors. Uh, once they're in, they might mess with them a little bit. The last hour, that's when... The students enjoy it too. So the last hour, they'll just they'll just destroy them. <laughs> it's for fun. All right, that's great. Now, um, so in, in the previous year, um, we were talking earlier, and I wanted to know if you would share what you did in terms of simulating the power grid. Yes, last year. Uh, the scenario was a SCADA system. They were a power company. Oh, okay. And they had a a wind wind generator, hydroelectric, and nuclear, and they had to keep those up. Um, so we simulated that environment. So this is a picture of the... So, so we built these little devices. Um, it's a Raspberry Pi and a custom uh, circuit board um, tied in with a web page, which simulated their, their three power reactors. So we had wind turbine, nuclear reactor, hydroelectric, um, and they had to keep them in the green here. It was very simple, just something for them to do. But for example, the wind turbine, it told you, it told the wind speed, and it showed the RPMs of the of the turbine. Uh, in the back end, we could manipulate 
the wind speed. <laughs> so I just had a script so that kind of randomly. The weatherman, same time, right. right? So I had a script that would just randomly, you know, make it fluctuate, but I could tell it to trend, start trending up, start trending down. So I could, I could cut it down to zero wind speed, you know, so it's not generating any power. And their little thing would go red here because they're not generating any power. If I simulate a windstorm, you know, get it 100 miles uh -huh. per hour, okay. they had a little slider here and they'd have to increase the resistance in order to keep the thing from going too fast to you keep it all in the green. Down. I see. If their, uh, if their things got into yellow or red status, these would uh, light up. If all three went red, their power grid went offline. And that's when the fun happens. So <laughs> that's where you can play that video. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, right. Which is on here, so it shuts down their power. And you made this? Yeah, it's all it was all custom written. Uh, and it's so a little the, web page. And, yeah, and the actual um, the circuit board, you actually had that custom made as well. Uh, yeah, I I learned to found a little online program where you could design circuit boards and started with my prototyping on the breadboard. Oh, that's amazing! This here, just to you know get the circuit working. Uh huh. Took that schematic and laid it out to a circuit board. That's fantastic. Uh, did this down at UW Tacoma in their lab. So this is a collaborative effort. You've got schools from all over. It's uh, almost exclusively Highline building the environment, but we have some people from uh, other schools. Ryan's from uh, Idaho State, Utah, Utah State. Uh, <laughs> Don from University of Washington, Tacoma. Um, but the uh, the environment is, is built here. And the scenario is designed here. And how many com uh, how many competitors do you guys have this year? This year we have 13 teams. Uh, we did a pre-qualifier. So that's about 100 college students, right? Or yeah, 104. 104. So this is the first time you guys have put it in AWS. So how's that going for you guys? What, what were the... Uh, Pros Overall, I think it's going well. We've, we've been doing it on vSphere for probably five or six years, and we felt we were getting really good at it. So it was kind of scary, you know, going into Sorry, AWS, yeah. brand new, never done uh -huh. it. I don't call them back. Um, only the but we've had less tech support calls this year, infrastructure problems, than we ever have. Oh, I, okay. I think that just speaks to the nature of the stability of AWS. Yeah, you know? right. So in AWS, they've got... Um, the domain controller, DNS server, those assets that you were talking about in there. Yep. The um, the red team also attacks them from AWS? Uh, kind of both. They The red team has some Kali boxes in AWS. They also like to use their own laptops, so we gave them a VPN. I see. Good. Um, so they're VPNing into the environment so they can attack from their own their own workstations. And so the, the students need to harden their boxes, but they also have a Palo Alto Networks firewall that they're using, and they're they need to configure that to resist uh, the, the the red team as well, right? They do. Uh, so how well attacks, do they how well do they do with that? Some much better than others, obviously. I think the ones that uh, that use the training that you offer, the free training, do really well, and the ones that come in and have never touched it are yeah, yeah those are right. going to be in a little bit of trouble. The way we did it in Amazon, we used uh, yeah we had a Python script using Boto three um, framework. To create it all in Amazon, your status? and that automated the that integration. automated the the build of uh, thirteen teams, so I thirteen have... VPCs, forty nine subnets, uh, it's like fifty or sixty Elastic IPs, seventy five routes, and thirty and thirty yes. route tables, uh, three hundred and fifteen EC two instances, yep. uh, thirty or forty security groups, internet gateways, NAT gateways. And then all configured correctly. All that plumbing, and you automated the uh, configuration of each of those. Right. It built the whole thing in less than an hour. Run the script, and That's which is great. like five, six hundred lines of code. And it built the environment. That's, now you've also done this in an international setting, right? Yes. So in addition to PRCCDC, which is a part of the national CCDC, and we have to follow their rules, we have our own. Uh, cyber defense competition that we've been doing four years, three years, three years, uh, called, yeah, ICCDI, the Inter International Collegiate Cyber Defense Invitational, uh, because we just invite right, schools. Right. So last year we had five teams here in the U.S., 
uh, four teams in Namibia, in Africa, and one in Indonesia. Oh, wow. Um, and that we actually ran that in AWS. That was kind of our trial run to this. Oh, okay. It was much simpler uh, config. That one, since we don't have to follow the uh, CCDC rules, we decided it should be a collaborative event. So rather than every student individually competing, they were all sort of they were competing for individual prizes, but they all needed to help each other. So the scenario was they were all world regions of a global uh -huh. company, and they actually had to uh, cooperate in order to solve problems. So we had a few injects that got passed hey, off to that? another one, to another region, and a follow the sun model. And then when they came back, they had to pick up on their work. And, uh -huh. and it was a lot of fun because we had a Zoom session, so these students from Africa and Indonesia and the U.S. were all chatting and uh -huh. talking through Zoom oh, and working great. together to solve problems. So I think the students really enjoyed it. And it's similar kind of idea where they were given injects, but the, the same idea. Were... There's injects. There's a live red team. They have to run a business. The live red team was both in Namibia um, and here in the U.S. Uh, in Namibia, we had a company that was helping us do red team plus. Namibian Defense Force. Oh, so, wow. Namibian military. Okay, really? Here in the U.S., it was uh, we had some, we had the U.S. Army as our red team, and the Namibian Defense Force really enjoyed finding out that they're working with the U.S. Army. When the, oh. once they found out, they were like, "We're working with the U.S. Army on this. This is great," you know. <laughs> That's fantastic. So they had a great time too. But so, what stood out to you in terms of like one of the most memorable experiences you had during these competitions? Um, four. I think it was four or five years ago. Our scenario was the uh, blue teams were IT support for the local CDC field office during the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> okay, that's great. So as the, as the scenario progressed, they started to realize what was going on. And the last hour of the competition, we actually had several people dressed up as zombies trying to break into the students' rooms. Oh, my gosh. And the students were using their desks and barricading the doors. <laughs> So that one was a lot of fun. Wow, well, it's, it's, the plot thickened. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for uh, sharing with us what you guys are doing. This has been uh, Mitch and I have loved being a part of this because you guys are, you guys are on the the front edge of training, you know, the cyber warriors of the future. And this is a uh, this is an elaborate operation you guys have put together. You've been doing this for the last ten years, and it's exciting. I mean, it's uh, I'm sure everyone leaving this experience is coming out of it with memories and maybe enthusiasm for pursuing a career in uh, cybersecurity. Yeah, we hope so.